Okay, I think it has to do with the switches. But he's gonna like keep, it, keep it upright and press it just enough where it's just gas. Just the gas, not yeah. enough cream, right? Okay, so this is gonna be a cheer to bleed me out. Okay. So do you want to do it? Do you want to talk about it later? What do you want to find out? Probably the boost for now. We just like cheer. Talk about it. Okay, so we're up there. I think mine's already. You got it. You got it. Perfect. So you want to go off now? Okay. Yeah. I want a little cream first, is that okay? No, a cream first? No. Should I do the gas first? It might be easier to do the gas first. And it's going to be weird. Shh. You got it. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Can't do it. Okay. So we're gonna cheers that and then do it? Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Can you get them? Oh, I should do better than that.
Hi, everyone, and welcome to Always Baked. I'm Cupcake. And for this episode, we have someone uh, super special to the Austin scene, to myself, to, um, I don't know, just to drag in general, I think. Um, she is the mother of Poo Poo Platter um, from Camp Wanakiki, also um, just a person in the scene that is just, I, I just can't like say good enough things about this person. Um, and now you're going to meet them. It is Poo Poo, everyone. Hello. Yes. Mother monster, mother Poo Poo. Um, okay, first things first, can we, I immediately want to call you Bleed Me In. I know that that has changed now for good reason. Um, do you, like, can we talk about it? Do you want to address it or, um, or we don't, or we don't have to at all. It's totally oh, obvious. absolutely. So I started drag 20 years ago and back in that time, like shock drag was really popular. Yeah. that's. And yeah. so like a really good pun was Bleed Me On Rhapsody, you know, after Bohemian Rhapsody, of course. Um, and you know, at the time, you know, the name went over well as far as like, you know, people weren't really sensitive to it. The big problem has been over the years is that people just butcher the fuck out of it. Uh, that is very true. I have seen it butchered. People, people, I think as maybe Queen and Bohemian Rhapsody got less popular, people didn't get the reference. Right. And so they, they, I've seen it misspelled so many times and said like wrong so many times too. And I, so I totally get like wanting to change it for that way. And I think people are just like a little dumber. Yeah. And also too, like when you're at a, a loud club and you're like, Oh, hi, I'm believing on Rhapsody. They don't hear a single syllable. <laughs> yeah, there's like, blah, blah, yeah. Blah. And so, you know, that was always been a problem. And then once my name became shadow band, did it become shadow band? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like on Instagram and everything. Yeah. Like people couldn't find me on TikTok when I was using it. Oh, um, okay. I didn't get too many like complaints, like personal complaints. Yeah, every once in a while, someone make a comment like that name was not funny or you know something like that. For sure, for sure. Uh, but when we were in London, every person I told my name cackled. Oh, I bet they love it. Yeah, because it's like Queen. You yeah, know, of course. Yeah, they totally got it. And when you hear it and you get it, you're like, oh my god, this is such a fucking smart drag name. Like, I I think it's amazing. How did they? So they should have been Bulimian. That is so crazy. Like. Because the spelling of it, to me, when I think of bulimia and rhapsody, I don't think of bulimia. Yeah. I, 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 it just doesn't even cross my mind. And so the fact that they like shut up in, that's so crazy. But because the full word bulimia is, is in inside it. of it, yeah, that's how it got shut down. Wow. wow. And, and bulimia is not funny unless it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're Karen Carpenter. It's funny because even my own cousin didn't get the joke for the longest time. And then, and then <laughs> Bohemia Rhapsody came out and her husband goes, do you think your cousin watched that movie? And she's like, why? No, she's like, why? Oh, my God. And he's like, believe me, believe me Rhapsody. And Rhapsody. And she's like, oh. People are so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my God. That's that's amazing. I think it's a very, very smart drag name. Did you get, when you were in Camp Kiki, did they say, have any issue with it at all? Because I know that they're a little bit more like, um, they're trying to be inclusive of everybody a bit more there. And like, yeah. And it was going to be like on a national like level. So I don't know. I did ask if it was going to be a problem, if I shouldn't, you know change my name yeah you're like, like aware and yeah. like no i don't think so but if you're gonna do it do it now right right and, and don't do it later which i did which you did <laughs> um, right but i also think too it's probably a factor out of uh, several why i didn't win uh, yeah because they that. represent hamburger mary's uh, <laughs> and someone named believe and yeah i could see how that could be a problem that'd be really i mean it's funny but also like right yeah 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 wow you know you don't think about like whenever you cheat we were picking your drag name how how much it's going to fucking affect like so much like that's so crazy because i think it's in my mind when i heard i was like this is funny smart um a great drag a pun drag name that's like so good right and but then so many other people are like it's just not marketable and that's what the problem was like in the long run after like you know after the 20 years of doing drag right, yeah. like oh i should probably find something a little bit easier to pronounce right that you know won't get shadow banned yeah and so and i th you know Picking boo-boo, I think, is smart, too, because it's like it's enough where someone's like, wait, what? And so I, I think that stops people, and then they'll re remember it, and it's I've never heard of that name before, really, like boo-boo. But it's also like kind of like uh, like um, like honey boo-boo yeah, a little bit. So it's like in people's minds, I think it's smart. Yeah, but it's so crazy. I still have the hardest time, like, not saying believe me in. Yeah, life. and sometimes when I, you know, host a show, I'm like, hi, honey, it's your boo-boo. You know, it's like that, you know, there that, are different, that. there's like different, or a lot of ways they could use like use a name and oh, yeah. what was it before it was like sweetheart bohemian bohemian yeah, rhapsody your sweetheart yeah yeah bohemian rhapsody yeah but, i you know it's so crazy that now that drag has gotten so like now that we are like 
businesses. Right. And like there's corporate sponsors, and everything like that are just like, you know, we're on like these national levels. I mean, you much more than me, but like you, those things come up and you're like, fuck. Mm-hmm. I always think about, I honestly think about my name potentially being a problem. Like, drag race wise because like rupaul is like her character's cupcake right and like is that something that she will like be like cool with or is it something she's like uh, i'm cupcake bitch like there's not gonna be another one i don't know and i will i ever know like i don't know i think that's interesting evie oddly we had her at a show and because my my venmo is my name cupcake uh-huh. which is like one of her like sayings right and um evie Oddly's assistant was like i'm gonna tell rupaul and i was like tell her tell rupaul please i don't know if she'll be happy or not but tell her like it's an homage, you know, like, right. I hope that I would hope that like they would be understanding, but once again, it, it could be like, I mean, she has like trademarked. I don't know. Like, you know, if she has like ownership over, probably not ownership over the name cupcake, I would assume. Yeah. I don't ever see her talk about it though. Like, she's mentioned her former punk band and all the stuff she did in the eighties, but I'd never, ever hear her talk about star booty or oh, listen. I don't think, I don't think that she like, I don't think she wants it to exist anymore. It was right before drag race. And if you watch it, I watched it all the time. It is a low budget. It is she, she's like sucking dick in that movie. Okay. She literally and like she literally is like stomping on guys nuts. It's a it's like an NC seventeen for sure. It's not something. It's definitely not mass appeal, which I think is hilarious. Okay. And she wants to like erase it, but like so then it's like, well, would she like? Would that be a problem for me in that way? I don't know. <sighs> I'm surprised that I haven't seen it because I do love never terrible seen... low budget movies. Bitch, it is so good. Lady Bunny's in it. Fucking um, uh, a couple porn stars are in it. It's so um, Candace Kane is in it. Okay. It's so good. She's an FBI agent who goes undercover as a hooker named Cupcake. Okay, it's so good. And just a suck dick to fucking and her, her niece Cornisha have been abducted oh by Annika Manners, the, this like makeup company. It's ridiculous. It starts out with her like doing Taekwondo. It's everything. When I hear Cornisha, I think of her song "Back to My Roots." She's like, "Ta ta, Cornisha." If you go back through RuPaul's like history, she has reused so many things, like the French phrases, over and over and over again. Like in Star Booty, she says so many drag race catchphrases that just are, aren't there yet, but like she's working on them. You can okay. see that she's working on them. It's so wild to see. Like she, the um, the rap she did with Miley, the um, uh, that she did with on Catitude, on, on the Miley album that she did. She's like, um. Uh, it's like, it's dirty as fuck. That rap, I thought was written by Miley. It's in Star Booty. Okay. Yeah. So she's at a brand before drag queens really branded themselves. Oh, 1,000%. She, yeah. uh, she, she, she knew what she was doing from a long time ago. And like, I, that's why like, I like sort of, now I look at RuPaul as sort of different. I think, I think everyone kind of does. Like that's in drag, you know, because she, I don't, I don't know if she's sold out, but she's, you know, she's like, it's a business story and it's work. Mm-hmm. Which I, which honestly, I'm sure that you understand too. Like, People are always like, drag is so fun. I'm like, it is so fun. It's cool. That it's my job. It's still a job. It's a fucking job. And like, sometimes this is like the last thing you want to do, you know? And I'm sure it gets so exhausting for like her to like, I mean, ah, yeah. And to be always that, do you, okay. I, I think about this all the time and I don't have an answer for it. Like why, like why us drag characters? Why, why can people not separate them from like our like selves? Does that make sense? Like, we are always like, I'm always cupcake to some people. Right. And like, you're always like blaming some people. And it's like, if you're, we were in actors, like in a, like a play, uh-huh. it would be really weird for everyone to be calling us our play name, like outside of the play. Right. It'd be super weird. Yeah. Well, so when I was going by Bellini on Rhapsody, a lot of people wouldn't even call me that when I was in drag because they, my name was just easier to say. Like, oh, hey, Waldo, even though I'm in drag. Right. Right. So then that's a weird, like, just was So too. like, I haven't always had that, but now that I've changed it to Boo Boo, people call me Boo Boo when I'm not in drag, which is fine because it's like, oh, hey, Boo Boo, you know? Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, it works. Like a term of endearment. Yeah. So. I just, I, I guess I tried it. I would like my lives to be separate. <laughs> I did for a long time. That's why I have like two profiles, you know? Yeah. My drag profile and my non drag profile. I never wanted them to cross. Right. Because it, 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 it consumes your whole life. Yeah. It really does. And it's like, fuck. Like all of a sudden, like, I mean, it's just like, I don't want. I don't want to talk about work all the time. Right. Yeah. And this is like, I love it, but it's work. And like, that's why I try to explain to people and they just don't, I, is it because we're like, so because we're not on a stage because we're like in like a bar and sort of like, it's almost like interactive, like theater throughout the night. Like we don't ever like drop the character. It's like the whole night's like a play. So we still go, go out in our workplace. So people just kind of assume we're, yeah, you know, we're still that person. That person. I mean, we are, but 
when I'm not in drag, I'm off for the night. Me too, right? Like I want to be off for the night, but some people don't like that. Some people don't want you to be off for the night. They don't get it. And some queens don't like it when you call them by like their day name, even though like, they're like, right, right. Because I well that I think that gets into the issue of like a lot of people. People are doing drag for a lot of different reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people that are in drag that are like using it as like a like a vehicle to transition. Right. And then there's people like that do drag as like a uh, theatrical like expression. And then I think there's people who do drag because they are trying to like, find themselves. You know, there's a bunch of different reasons why I think. So it is really like, um, it's just interesting to see how people, the identities that we create, like, I don't know, sometimes help and like help me, but sometimes also like a huge hindrance to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I hate, I hate cupcake and I love cupcake sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever hear Bolivian's voice inside of your head whenever you're not Bolivian? I have a lot of voices. <laughs> <laughs> Work. Same. Fuck yeah. It's so weird. Like me, I'll be like, it makes me feel crazy in a good way because sometimes I'm like, I hear like cupcake, like when I'm Brady, like the like, the confidence I have is cupcake. Like when it come, will come through and be like, no, well, fuck this way. And I'm like, this character I created in my head is now like my therapy, which is so strange. But good, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know out of drag, I'm pretty socially awkward. Even in drag, I'm still socially awkward, but I just kind of roll with it and just act dumber. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think that's, uh, so that's, to me, that's so, what's, what's so fun about you is like, it is this, you force people to like, the awkward happens and then it, it keeps going. It doesn't stop. And no. like, it's like, how, what happens like after that and after that? It's, I think that's so fun. And so like, but that makes it fucking hilarious to me. It's like, it doesn't ever like, like you can't like press, you can't turn it off. No. Yeah, it's like the whole night, like you gotta go through it. And it's like, oh, I love that. It's such like a, a weird, like fun experience. Believe me in is, a, is an experience all the time. I love that. It's just a, one of the voices in my head that tells me to do yeah. stupid <laughs> shit. And, and it works. I don't know what drug she's taking. Right, I, a lot of them. A few of them. <laughs> a few of them. I think so. You like starting out with like shock drag. I think that I was that, that was like a really like influential part of drag for me too. And like I know you. Do you think that um? Do you think that's gotten like lost now? I mean, I don't really see a lot of it anymore because people are so quick to like you know cancel people. Yeah, like what would be shocking now? I think it would be pretty. I guess it to me it may be hard. To be shocking, and also be like, yeah, I'm can- it'd be yeah. really quick to cancel. And people. also, we've kind of seen all Everything. of it at this point. Like, yeah. what what new can you do with this? Oh, point? I think I can do some things. Well, I'm sure you can. <laughs> I mean, you already have. I'm sure there's a few more. <laughs> uh, there's a few more up my sleeve. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, what time are we at? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Um, we are going to take a quick break. Bink. Do you own a squatty potty? I do not own a squatty. Have potty. Have you ever used a squatty potty? I have. But a lot of times I just kind of like rest on my tippy toes. Okay. No, that's legit for sure. I know what you mean. Like sometimes I'll get on the toilet and just sort of like I, I perch myself as though I am sort of squatting. I will say though, having a squatty potty, even though we're not sponsored by them, I wish we were, the squatty potty itself, I don't even bring my phone to the bathroom anymore. I literally don't. I can like, I host that there and like if you don't have a squatty potty, you can use like two paint cans. Uh-huh. Or something like that, or like sometimes in my makeup boxes, just like get up there because it really like, straightens you out. And like, I'm not kidding, it just the shit falls out. <laughs> yeah, if I need a little extra push, I just kind of like straighten out my core, rest on my tippy toes, and then mm-hmm. usually that does the trick. It's amazing to me that the human, that the American bath, like not, the American toilet is just not conducive to shitting. No, it's so strange. I mean, your legs go to sleep, my legs go to sleep so fast. Oh, yeah. When I get tap, leg tattoos, they don't hurt because my legs are asleep. <sighs> That's so wild. I'm surprised I don't have more leg tattoos. I, but Right? Yeah. They, they don't bother me. Huh. Because they're asleep. Three minutes in, I don't feel You're asleep. You're asleep. Wow. Yeah. Do you think the blood flow is like the, is it a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it's probably not a good thing. Probably not a good thing. But, you know. But you know what else is not a good thing? It's straining while you shit. You're not, I'm not pushing it so bad. I try to breathe. Mm-hmm. And the squatty potty, I think, helps with that, too. You to push. So everyone, if you don't have a squatty potty, go out and get one. At least try one. At least perch up on your toilet. Give your body um, a hug, a rest. Give your body a moment to be free and release that shit inside your body. Squatty potty. And we're back with Always Big. My name's Cupcake. This is Boo Boo. Right Hello. Here. Mother of Poo Platter. 
and star of uh, Cable and Kiki. Do you have any other credits I should be listening to there? I feel like you have three, and I'm missing one. Um, it's not out yet, but I will be in a movie. Oh! Yes. Ah, oh, what movie? Can you uh, talk about it? Yes, it is called Good Vibes Only. It's a horror movie, and it makes fun of toxic positivity. Oh my god, I love that. It takes place at that, this social media company, and this like misfit employee learns about toxic positivity and addresses it in a a meeting slash you know like hard circle type environment. Yes. And the owner's like, "Oh, that's very interesting. Thank you for bringing that up." Fires her, <laughs> and it's about this girl's revenge on the owner. And I'm the owner's best friend, oh my God. so I'm a villain. I'm not the killer, but I'm definitely someone you don't like. Yes. Maybe you will like me. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but yeah. Oh my God. When do you have an idea when it's going to come out? I don't know when it's going to be out. Is it like a full length? Yeah, it's a full length oh feature. Um, right now, the director is circulating a movie right now. It's actually released by Trauma. Oh my God, cool. Uh, it's called Fuck Dolly yeah. Deadly 2. Um, and how I found out about the director is getting quarantined. I was watching low budget movies yeah. on Amazon Prime. <laughs> and I watched Dolly Deadly. Like, I love this movie. And I tried to find out. I heard there was a sequel. I couldn't find anything. So I contacted the director and I go, hey. On Instagram or what? Instagram or Facebook or something. Social media of some Social sort. Social media can be so badass. Either. And I go, hey, I really love your movie. Where is the sequel? Yeah. She goes, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. But it's not out. We became friends. She lives in Vegas. And you know I go to Vegas a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so I go, hey, I'm coming to Vegas. Do you want to go have lunch? Shut and we go have up. lunch. And by the third or fourth lunch date, she goes, I'm working on a movie. I have a, a, a bit part for you. Do you want to do it? And I said, yes. yeah. And she actually made it a bigger part. Oh, my God. That's so, so badass. That's so – okay. That's amazing that you just tell that story because I was going to ask you. You have so many eclectic friends. Your friends, it's like – Literally, so Boo Boo texted me um, like last Thursday and was like, "Hey, I'm with Paul Abdul's assistant. Um, they're in town. We might come to your show." And I was like, and I was talking to someone, and they're like, "Blinia and Louisiana have the strangest, like the most eclectic friend group." And I'm like, I, "You do like, like knowing like the glamorous Monique, yeah, like uh, Karen Black, like all these people. Like how how do you find these people? And is it is it through social media that you've like you yeah, connect I with them? Yeah, I just contacted just... Glamorous Monique, and I'm like, "Hey, let's hang out." I forget if we hung out before we booked her or after, but we have hung out a couple of times. We went to Panera together. That's so random. And um, I love that. And we spent Christmas night at her house ah! and we slept on the, her living room floor. Shut up. She's like, yeah, come stay at my house. And then by the time she didn't, she didn't have a bed. bed. She's like, threw out some blankets. And was like, make a pallet. Yeah. But <laughs> I think that is me. I don't see. I think my problem is I, People like say, "Oh yeah, like let's let's like do lunch or something." They hang out. I'm like, "Okay, yeah, sure." And I never really follow through. Like you follow through. Yeah. And like, hey, I think I love that. I love that about you. I think that's so badass. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how glamorous Monique started. We just like hung out. No, I met her at DragCon. Yeah, you choose that. Oh, yeah. And you just like how did how do you how do you separate yourself from just like a random fan to these people though? Um, like, how do you connect with them more? I started with a story. So Louisiana and I you know, love her, love her music. And we would get stoned together and watch music videos. And <laughs> it's like the Mandela effect. I don't know. We were watching Punch My Kitty. And for some reason in our heads at the end of the video, she was, and by kitty, I mean pussy. <laughs> and then we couldn't find it. Oh, wait, like, did this really happen? And then I yeah. asked Monique and I'm like, where is that video? She goes, that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you and believe you and Louisiana both remembered it. Yeah, that is, maybe it is made no effect. So I that is so wild. And then that that connection. That's right my there. first conversation with her. I, like, I, I, I love that. I love your video. I remember this video. Where is this, where yeah. is it? It's not there. Wow, I love that. I she, like I'm so just like in awe of like yeah y'all's friendship. It's so crazy. It's like you have so many friends like that. It's like you it's by chance, yeah, really. Yeah. By chance, I think you also like you follow through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You follow up and like do things. I mean, Louisiana's more charismatic. Like everyone talks to her and I just kind of like follow up, like, hey, do you want to do this? And like, okay. But you're like a fun per- like you're a fun person. I think that when I know when I when I first met you, like you you're not the person that's like when I was like, Hey, let's go do something, you're like, I have something we can go do. 
Like you all, like you know, like fun things to do, and you, it's not like some like let's go see a movie. It's like let's. I think didn't we do a scavenger hunt when we first met? We did a Valentine's Day scavenger hunt. I believe. Yes, and it was like all around town. It was like insane, and I was like, what is this? And it was just you're just like we're down for like fun things, and I think that is so like a badass quality of yours. I just need to find weird things to do and kind of because there's so many weird things going on show people the weird things that i like and if you like it too then yeah then we're friends you yeah know? i would sometimes would like bring guys over for like dates well it's dates <laughs> all right like, yeah let's watch this video and it's shay st john right just like really like and they think if they made and it if through they it. like it we can hang if not i'd never see them again ah, i love that <laughs> i love it's like a litmus test like okay let's see if you're cool uh, yeah i think that's i think that's really smart and good i think that you that filters on a lot of, a lot of fucking bullshit people. Right. Yeah, because they're not. Hell yes. Um, <laughs> I um, I feel like I want to talk about everyone. So I don't know if you know this. Uh, Blue Ann, Boo Boo, um, created this amazing uh, troupe called Poo Poo Platter. I feel like it's the only drag troupe that exists that I know of. Right. In my mind. I, mean, I know we've looked around and there are some sort of things, but the only thing that the only troupe that has toured and like been a group for as long as we have, I think is, I, it might be the only one who exists. If not, if you're out there listening to this and you know of a drag troupe, please like point us away. I would love to like, I just, you know, know about them cause it's badass. But, um, poo poo platter, um, has always been something I wanted to be a part of mm-hmm. something that, um, I'm so happy to be part of, but also something that, um, it's always been yours mm-hmm. very much. So, and I love that, I love that. I think that that's uh, like a strong thing that you hold on to because I feel like if you would have like let it go sort of like to the mat, to like everyone involved more, it would have probably not survived as long as it did. Right. And um, also wouldn't have, you have to have, you have to have like um, a, sh- a captain and like you would like captain the whole time. And I, I like appreciate that. I know it's been hard though too. Like I know it's been yeah. like and taxing. Initially that was not my plan. It's even more like a cooperative group, you know, and everyone said, no mom, you're in charge. And so you and said, that, fuck it, I'm, I'm in charge. Okay, I'm in charge. Yeah, yeah. Because my previous troop was kind of like a collaborative group, but it only lasted three years because of all the because of that, egos yeah. and, you know, everyone had wanted to go in different directions. And That's the thing. It's like, yeah, I mean, when you have so many strong, like, people, which, I mean, you want to have in your troop, it's like the strong, like, um, personalities come, like, strong, like, yeah, thoughts and, like, directions mm-hmm. and everything like that. And I think that just I – it kind of, like, was nice to be like, you know what? Believe me and take the wheel, <laughs> you know, like let, I'm down because I, I knew that you would do things that um, you'd book things for us that were like interesting, cool. Like I, I just knew I trusted you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's um, hard to do most of the time. But like, I think that you've you've done such an amazing job with food platter. What are your thoughts on India ending it? Like what's um, like I, I, I have my thoughts and we've talked about it, but I would just like, like, how do you feel? Um, I definitely feel a sense of relief that I can kind of do a lot of things that I've always wanted to do that I can't do because between like my day job and running drag shows, like I didn't have time to do anything, anything else. else. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. And so I got to let go of something, you know, yeah, yeah. and, uh, I've been doing drag for 20 years. I've been putting on events for 19 of those years. And putting on events is exhausting. Yeah. And I'm still going to do it. Just not on the regular basis. Right. Like, and I feel like, oh, I want to do this one show and I'll do it. And then because it, it, when it is regular, it becomes sort of like a, um, it becomes a, like a job, a task. Yeah. And like, it's like, okay, it's not always, it's always inspired. You mm-hmm. know, it's always like, I have to do this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to try out some new things. I want to get back into doing some visual art. Um, I'm actually opening my own salon. Oh, me and Summer Clearance are opening our own salon. Together. Badass. Good. That's about time. Um, yeah. I think I want to learn to DJ. Hell yes. I've kind of like done like... I feel like you, you're right on the edge I've of that. I've done a little bit, not like mixing or anything, but I definitely like played for events. I've Would been to after DJ parties. Um, I actually want a new moniker. Yeah. Um, and it's actually a, a derivative of my birth name, uh, which my grandmother, my abuela, would call me Cristo Juan. Okay, yes. It's like a Spanish version of my birth name. Yeah. But I want to take the Christ out of it and be like East the One. Oh, yeah. East the One. Yeah. Or just East though. I love that. I so love like that. Four letters for that name, four East letters for my drag name. Perfect. You know, keeping it short and simple. Yeah, simple. memorable East yeah. I love that. So Fuck yes. If I DJ, I'll be like East the or East the One. I love that. Fuck um, yes. And like we're right, with Poopoo Platter, that would not be possible to do. 
you know, like if you were like having to do poop live yeah. for sure. Um, cause at one point I was running six shows a month cool. and I would slowly pick them off and you know, drop this show, drop this show, drop this show. And it's like, I'll just do cuckoo platter. And then even then I was like, no, we've done it for a long time. We've done it for 10 years. Yeah. And it's like, I, I feel like I don't know what else we would do. Right. And we've done a lot of, ama- I've done a lot of amazing things. My, one of my favorite moments for cuckoo platter is when we did gag mm-hmm. and had people come and do some of the most incredible performances I've ever seen on the Elysium stage. Like, I don't think, like, I don't think someone can, like, I can see a number that's, like, it's good as, like, hentai's numbers were, uh, like, they were incredible, you mm-hmm. know, and really inspired people and, like, made, opened up this whole new world of drag, I think, like, with these new, fresh, like, bodies and, like, creative talents. Um, and I think that's fucking amazing. And then we, as a troop ourselves, we fostered that talent, but then us ourselves have done, I mean, there's not, I don't know what else we would do. Right. Like, it's just like, it's coming to a point where it's like, okay. Cause you're right. Like to be more shocking would be like, to be like literally canceling, like cancel, you know, it's offensive and not in a good way. Right. And, um, yeah, there's just not much more, I think for us to explore, just strange to say, but like, I, I'm actually super, I'm super, um, I don't know what sad is the right word, but I'm super, um, interested to see like what will be next because i think that people platter has been like a part of me and like i feel like just something that i was really like wanted to be a part of and now it's gonna be over it's sort of like wow like i did that like right. and it's like over and like now it's like what is the next thing it's, it's exciting yeah yeah i mean I've, it's a, it is free it's, it's a little bit freeing yeah i've done a lot with it i did, i modeled it a little bit after my the first trip that i was in but actually i accomplished a lot more and Poo Poo Platter, then I did my first trip, Sissy Boy. And so oh, I yeah, can't imagine, like, what else I would do. Right, right. And, you know, the landscape of drag is so different now. It really is. It really is. And in, in a good way and a bad way, I think it's like, it really, um, did you ever expect, like, to, to drag to become what it has? No. No. Me either. I, I always thought we'd be underground bitches. Yeah, and that's how I started out. It was, it was like a punk rock troupe that were trashy as fuck making the biggest messes on stage we didn't know the words to our songs these went up there like nine, nine, fuck, yeah. roll around on the ground throw shit all over us you know yeah. and it's fun yeah yeah i love that and i i i miss that aspect of it a little bit you know and after i finish elysium will have a new show uh, created by my newest drag child monster mash oh i love that yeah and i kind of think you know passing the torch passing the torch to some other crusty performers yeah but kind of revive that a little bit it won't be the same but at least that vein will be there in some totally. fashion because they have they haven't done everything yeah and they 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 will have a moment i was talking to ruby knight and ruby knight was like remember when poopoo platter was problematic <laughs> and i was <laughs> like yes i do and like now it's so it's like not vanilla but it's just so like run of the mill a little bit yeah it's expected and it's like i do remember when poopoo platter was problematic and like we were like it was like Ooh! right you know but now it's just i i think we did maybe our job like we like Expose enough people to it to where like you know now now there's another like generation of like craziness that can right. happen. I might push the boundaries a little bit for my final number, but nothing like too bad to get like canceled. Right. I, I some people be like that's not funny, but you know I'm not. <laughs> I'm. It's fine. I, if if everyone thinks your shit's funny, then it's fucking basic. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think if everyone likes your shit, then there's got to be people that don't like it. Right. I am um, for, I think for my final number, I mean, I know what I'm going to do for my final number. I, the, the images are in my head. I, I want to be like, <laughs> like the sacrificial virgin, um, like getting like receiving like a huge poop from like the poop God and like just being covered in like chocolate mousse poop, like oh from this God. big butt in the sky, <laughs> like it lived, being lifted up and just like cascading this all over me. Yeah. I hope Kato's ready for the final show. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think so. I hope so too. I hope so too. It's going to be, I mean, I'm I'm saying fuck the bad, shit the bad bitch. I'm, right. I'm making a mess. I mean, the two biggest highlights that I can remember are one, that literal shit incident. <laughs> yes. And two, your Carly Rae Jepsen number oh where you were just like dead in the bathtub for the whole I, entire song. Like, Poo Poo Platter made me like do some things that I like in my back of my head. I was like, can I do this? Can I do this? And I was like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. It made sense to me. Uh, like noodles. So that I, both those numbers I like think about, and I can, I've only been able to do in that moment. They've never had, I've never right. been able to re like recreate them. Cause there was no reason to, it was just like, 
I wanted to be it's a dead girl. Like, let's cut to the feeling, just dead, suicide in the bathtub. And I thought the whole time during that number, I was like, am I going to move? Am I, am I going to move? And, every, <laughs> and then I, people kept throwing money. And I was like, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to fucking move at all. I'm like, ah! Was, I saved that story that Noodles did of you lying in the tub. You can see Louisiana on the side of the stage, like dancing along. <laughs> the the, she was performing it for She you. was performing it for me. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I, I, I've done this song one other time just to prove that I didn't know the words. I didn't know the words. I didn't do it because I didn't know the words. I did it because I, it was, I, was, I, lip, uh, I don't know who I saw first do a song. Like they were, when the song was playing, they weren't lip singing. I thought it was genius. And I was like, I got to find a way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so fun. Okay. We're going to take a break. Yes. Break time. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Break. Do you know that Squatty Potty is the, um, is the number one best selling thing from Shark Tank ever? It's the best invention they've ever, the best like thing they've ever gotten from Shark Tank. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was quite funny. Yeah. What's up? Mm. We're back with Always Makes. My name's Cupcake. This is Boo Boo. Hello. And um, I don't know if you, your makeup today is amazing. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. It's like, you know, it's, um, you sealed it. You're not, I haven't blinked once. It's just a little bit of lipstick and mascara. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> just a ton, yeah, hey, Courtney Act. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what is the, um, What's, do you know what the inspiration is for this look? Um, so I watched this documentary about men. Was it all like all like British men who wanted to be yes rubber and, doll? And they had like rubber, they had like head to toe rubber doll outfits, right? Yeah, and they would like sit by the pool. Yeah, yes, I remember. I remember seeing that too, and thinking it's like the secret life of dolls. Or yes, something yes, like that. yes. Yeah. And do, okay, in your mind, what I mean, not, I don't know if we could even like if we know, but like, are is it a sexual thing or is it a art thing like what is it a, an expressive like gender thing do you have any idea what that because i don't is it they want to be a doll do they want to i don't it's a fetish that i do well i mean like. i think because you know they're more like sex dolls i think there's a little bit of you know that fetish where they feel super sexy and like, in a latex suit of a doll yeah and to me i just thought it's creepy it's creepy as fuck yeah but also like it's creepy but also, like, yeah, just something I, to experience for sure. Like, like I, I wanted, I want to wear one just to see. Right. And this is like, you know, the Amazon like twenty dollar version of it. I would eventually like to get like a regular rubber doll mask and at least like the gloves to make my hands and wear a full outfit. I don't think I'd handle the full doll coverage. I don't even know how you begin. Like, I a latex skirt is hard to get into. A latex bodysuit, face, hands. Fingers, I cannot imagine what that's like. And this, I mean, how did those men that I saw in the video? They were old. Yeah. How did they not die? Right. Like that's what's strange to me. Like I, when we did poop bladder and I wore that full latex outfit, I had to go to the hospital afterwards. Oh fuck. That's, I, I, I took my glove and I could pour water out of it. That's how much I, I sweat in that outfit. Oh, damn. Doing a three minute number. These people are sitting by the pool in these like latex outfits. I don't understand how they're not dead. There's one that was walking like along the beach, and you know, and that is so yeah. weird. But it's funny because, like, I thought my if I ever did the whole rubber doll persona thing, her name would be Shannon. Shannon. And Shannon is like a good name because it's like it's like shy girl, but kind of cunty. Too. Yeah, oh yeah. Sh- Shannon's Shannon's cunty for sure. But yeah, she's like a she's like a beautiful cunt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, earlier today we learned that Shannon she had already, already died. died. Like, man, yeah. Oh my god, she's so, you're now. So, you're, now I am Shannon. Oh my god. <laughs> You've taken her soul into your body. This is Ness Shannon. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't know that she had cancer. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I didn't know either. <sighs> people died yesterday that shouldn't have, and then people didn't die that should have. I know. I know. I can't say that. Life right. is unfair. Life is unfair. Absolutely it is. Um, okay, everyone. If you don't know, Poopoo Platter is having its final show on January 27th. It is a Friday, Saturday. Saturday. It is a Saturday at Elysium. Tickets are on sale. We have special guests, Bitch Pudding, and... Maddie Morphosis, which is incredible. Like I, I've never, I've never even seen Maddie Morphosis on a lineup for anywhere, anything. I'm super, super excited. Was she yeah. easy to like book? Oh yeah, um, we were friends on Facebook even before she became a, a Rue girl because she's a big fan of Camp One Kiki. Love that. And I think she was actually going to be on it before she got the call for oh, for, for Drag Race, right? Yeah. And you know, we just chat on social media. And I found out she was in Vegas. And I'm like, hey, I'm coming to Vegas to film this movie. 
And it's just, do you want to stay with me? Shut up. I didn't know you, were, you stayed with Maddie. Yeah, I stayed with some friends. And then I stayed with Maddie to kind of split it up. Because I was there for a week. I don't want to, like, you know, take over. Right, no, no. Absolutely. That's smart. Too long. It's smart to, like, have a little so system around. I stayed with these friends. And they stayed with Maddie and her partner. And actually, Maddie and I went on a day trip to this little town in Arizona. I forget what it's called. But it's, like, this, like, it's known for their wild donkeys. It's, like, some little Wild West looking town. Did you go to a donkey show? <laughs> no but it was just as horrifying <laughs> um and you know little tourist shops and stuff it's like a wild west town with donkeys that you can feed the wild donkeys that live in the desert okay but every other storefront trump flags everywhere oh god that's terrifying yeah. oh that's terrifying so it was still think... kind of scary yeah. yeah yeah i bet something weird happened with the i forget stuff. what it was called king something kingman maybe or i don't know that's so true that's the other thing you follow through with your relationship and then like now you're like looking at her and like yeah and i said hey do you want to come perform the last movie platter she's like yes yes fuck yes yeah it's gonna be fucking amazing it's also your birthday your drag birthday and your real birthday yeah my 45th actual birthday my 20th drag birthday it is going to be a celebration like no other. There are tickets available still, yes. Yes. Tickets available. Get them online. Eventbrite, Poop of Iris, um, yeah. website. Poop of ATX. Uh, no, wait. Yeah, poop of ATX .eventbrite.com. Awesome. Check it out for sure. I'm going to be in it. Boo Boo's in it. Louisiana Purchase. Kitty Buick. Summer Clearance. Basara. Um, and Maddie Morphys is bitch pudding, right? And actually, I haven't posted it on social media yet, but by the time this is out, um, Zane Zena will be there. What? Zane Zena is going to... Come into town for one night to perform a poopoo platter. Oh my god! Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, that's so wild. So, you heard it here first. I mean, I that I had no idea about Actually, that either. When I go home, I was gonna go make the post. So, ah, yeah. I'm super excited. Okay, y'all get tickets to go see the final poopoo platter. It's gonna be something that you will, will not want to miss. It will never be recreated again. It's the final show of an amazing drag troupe in Austin that I've been lucky to be part of that Boo created. Um, thank you so much for doing Always Baked. Yes. Yes. It was a lot of fun. Fuck yes. I, I your rubber doll outfit is everything, and I just want to say like Austinites, people, whoever's listening to this in the world, wherever, because we're worldwide on Apple Music now. Um, check out Boo's drag because it is some of the smartest, strangest, coolest like drag that um, exists that is not in like the drag race spectrum. It's just something so cool and different, and if you're really missing out if you don't check it out. So I love it. I very feel very lucky to be one of your eclectic friends. And I enjoyed having you be a part of our trip. Oh, fuck yes. It's, it's like a dream come true for sure. Thank you so much. And we'll be working together soon for the Pumpkin Spice the Legend. Yes, pageant. oh my God, that's right. We do host a Pumpkin Spice Legend pageant each uh, holiday season. I, the first day of fall. The first day of fall, baby. The rest is still unwritten. Mm. <laughs> fuck yes. Uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. We will be together doing things in Austin. Boo Boo will still be around, of course. Um, my name's Cupcake. And next week we have Bestit here. Um, they're going to be promoting their new album. Super excited to see them. I've not seen them since they were hentai. <laughs> right. And um, yeah, they're going to be here. So uh, thank you for watching. We will see you and uh, you'll hear us next week. Bye. Toodles, poodles. <laughs>